Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily photography show on Facebook at facebook.com slash photojoseph every weekday at 9.30 a.m. Hello and welcome. So today's photo moment is about these things here. And I know at first look what you're thinking, and that's not what it's for. Look, these arrived in my mailbox really close to my birthday, and I swear I thought it was a gag gift. And then I realized, oh right, this is the company that reached out to me and said, hey, we got this cool new product called a lens shifter. Would you like to take a look at it? and review it on your blog or put it on your website or do a video or whatever. I thought, hey, sure, why not? This is kind of cool. So the idea here, the thing, first of all, it's called a lens shifter. The, uh, the company is engineerable, uh, but if you go to, uh, well, if you're watching this and you can click on the link uh, in the comments here or in the post and you'll see how to get to their page and to their Kickstarter. So this thing, the lens shifter, is a Kickstarter project that has just started. So these aren't actually shipping yet. And the whole idea here is that you attach this to your lens to allow you to do easier or more smooth focus pulls and zoom pulls. And here's, here's the basic idea. Let me set this thing down for a second and just, just spin this camera around. Ooh, let's not spin it that way. That would be the wrong knob to grab. Let's spin it this way. There we go. I'm going to tilt that guy back up a little bit. And I'm going to zoom into this camera a little bit here so you can see a little bit more closely what I'm doing. Back off just a touch there. Okay, so if I want to do a really smooth zoom or focus pull, and all I have are the rings on the camera, it can be quite difficult to move these consistently smoothly, right? It's kind of, you're gonna kind of stutter maybe a little bit, or just when you're rotating your wrist, maybe not get a really smooth motion. And so it's one of those challenges in movie making, filmmaking, any kind of video project, if you're going to change focus or going to change zoom while you're shooting to be able to make it look smooth and not stuttered. Stuttered like literally like what you're seeing here. Now this is because it's motorized and I've got a little Wi-Fi remote to make it zoom in and out. But if you were gonna do that kind of zoom pull and you wanted to do it really nice and smooth, doing it just by grabbing onto the barrel of the lens probably isn't gonna happen. It's probably not gonna work out that well. So you need a better way to do it. And that's where these handles come in. So the idea behind these handles is that you attach this to the lens. So let's take a look at one of them. You attach this thing to the lens and just screw it in tight and that gives you something to grip onto. So here, let's get a nice close-up look at these guys here. Zoom in real nice and close, get that thing into frame and focus that, there we go. So you can see it's a handle with a little kind of rubber belt and a weight on the bottom, and that is a counterbalance weight. So that way, once you've attached it to the lens, if you've got a really kind of loose or soft focus or zoom ring, it's not going to, uh, the weight of the handle is not gonna pull it and change focus, that would obviously be very bad. And the way this whole thing works is quite clever, it's simply this rubber belt band, a screw inside of here, and you just spin this to move the pivot point to tighten it or loosen it. Really, really straightforward, really very simple design. So let's go ahead and attach this thing. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna turn this just a little bit more towards you and zoom into that again. And then I'll go ahead and attach this guy and you can see exactly how it goes on. Zoom out just a little bit. So this is the part of the live production where I really should have my assistant here. But if you were watching from the very beginning, you may have noted that I, I pointed out I scheduled this thing on a day when my assistant was taking the day off. Bravo, very clever of me. Okay, so there's two of these. There's one that's for zoom and one that is for focus. Now, obviously, if you're not shooting with a zoom lens, then you don't need the zoom one. I'm gonna go ahead and attach both of these, although I would most likely only use the focus one in real life. I just, um, I don't know, I'm not, I don't usually do zoom pulls while shooting, but obviously if that's something you wanna do, then you have it. Now I can get this thing into position and I can, before I tighten it, I can kind of, actually I should loosen it a bit. Before I tighten it, I can rotate it anywhere on the lens. Given that this is a zoom lens, I wanna make sure that I've got the range of zoom that I need and then we're not gonna bump into things. Like right now, when I go all the way up to my widest setting, I'm actually bumping into my microphone receiver here. So that's not a good position. So I'm gonna kind of spin this down a little bit slide it down to there. Let's get that thing on. And here I'm going to, let's turn this thing straight into the camera here. You can see a little bit more here now. So now let's go ahead and tighten that up. So I'll just spin this guy to tighten it. And remember folks, this is live. If you're watching live right now, please do post your questions, comments, etc., in the comment field here on Facebook. A representative from the company is watching, at least they said they would be. So uh, if, they're, if you've got questions, you can throw them out there and they will try and answer them for you. All right, so there's one on there. Now I'm gonna do the focus one. Now the same idea for the focus ring is going to apply that you wanna make sure that you are attaching it in a way that's gonna allow you to easily reach 
the, uh, the near and far focus on your lens without being obstructed by anything else. However, here's the really cool thing about this particular camera, this what I'm working with right now, the Micro Four Thirds stuff. So if you're working with a traditional DSLR type of gear, your focus is going to be, your the focus on your lens is going to be, uh, what's the right way to put this? It's, it's manual, it's mechanical. It's a mechanical drive, meaning that when you turn the ring, that ring is turning gears that are turning other gears that are making the lens move. On the Micro Four Thirds Lumix gear, and I, I don't know where else this applies to other cameras, so I just know the Lumix stuff. On the Lumix gear, the, the focus is more like a drive-by wire, meaning that when you spin the dial, you're not actually spinning gears that spin other gears, you're telling the camera to spin a dial somewhere else. So it's just a command. What this means, and I'll show this to you once I've got it turned around and we're actually focusing on something, is I don't really need to worry about where this is to start. If my most comfortable position for a focus pull is gonna be going from here to here, then all I have to do is put it where I wanna start, tap on the LCD screen on my camera to focus, focus on whatever it is I wanted to start on, and the focus will change, but this ring won't move. This is incredibly, incredibly cool. It means I really don't have to worry about where I position this at all. This thing spins a full 360 degree spin. This is, I'm not gonna spin this 500 times, and it's not going to reach a maximum. The zoom is different. The zoom is mechanical, right? So the zoom, there's the beginning, there's the end. But the focus, it can go down and down, left and right, and all over the place. So, really cool. All right, so let's see here. So now we've got this thing up. You can see I've got the two rings on. They're nice and snug on there. And I think it's time to turn this thing around and actually shoot something. So let's spin this guy around. And you can see the big rig that I've kind of set up here. I'm going to pull the zoom all the way out. Let's tap to focus to start. And now we're going to switch views so that you can see what my camera sees. Haha, <laughs> cool. So there's that. So you know, I want to turn off this metadata display. I'm going to turn this back on in a little bit. Okay, so here we're looking through the viewfinder, we're looking through the camera. This is what the camera actually sees. Let's straighten this out a little bit. And let's start with a, a zoom pull. And again, I, I probably wouldn't really do this in real life, but, oops, just change focus on me. Let's try that. Oh, okay, I've got to get out of that mode. And focus that again. There we go. Okay, so I can do a zoom pull just by hand, and I'm not using the lever now. I'm just kind of spinning it by hand. And it's really hard to make it smooth. Right, this, is, this is the problem. And part of this is because of how I'm having to reach around the camera, I've got all this rigging on here. I've got to kind of reach around. It's not a comfortable way to get to it. Plus, even if I wasn't shooting with all this rigging on here, just trying to move that thing smoothly is a bit of a challenge, right? So if I go back in here and do that again, so now I'm going to use the, I say all the way out, I'm going to use the handle, use the lens shifter. I'm just going to slowly pull that down and get a much smoother push. Now that's probably not perfect. I think a little bit of practice would get that better, but that's the general idea. Now I'm not super excited about doing zoom pulls. I would much rather do a focus pull. So let's do that. So now I'm gonna position the focus ring where it's comfortable for me. So again, this is what I was talking about before where I can position this quite literally wherever I want. So I'm gonna start here because this just, I've just decided this is a comfortable position to start with. And now I wanna focus on the front cup there. So these cups are staggered and, and you know, there's some distance between them. Um, I want to tap to focus on that front cup. So let me show you that view. Let's go back to the camera view. And I'm going to tap on the LCD to focus on that first cup. And there it zooms in and it's focused on that. And now as I do my focus pull, very smoothly I can focus to the element on the back. I can go as fast or as slow as I want to. Let's go real slow to a real nice slow focus rack to the back. I can go fast if I want to. Let's go back to the front and I'll go back. Oops, I overshot at that time. There we go. Keep overshooting it. And that's just a case of practice. Get to know your lens, your shot. But this is something that I would just not be able to do by grabbing on the lens directly. That in itself is really, really cool. The fact that I can do this kind of smooth focus movement that I know I would not be able to do if I was um, doing this mechanically, uh, doing this manually with just my hand on the ring, that's, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so now here I want to turn on, let's go back to this view again, 
And let's talk about how you actually know if you're getting things in focus. Sorry, I've got devices beeping over here that shouldn't be. Let's, uh, let's see here. I'm going to turn on in my menus the info display. Okay, so now you're seeing what I'm seeing. And I've got focus peaking turned on. So there you can see the focus peaking on that cup. So let's see, I'm gonna rotate this shot a little bit, go down a little, turn that over, and can I zoom in any closer? No, I'm as close as I can get. Okay, so now let's see, let's focus on that front element or put the handle where I want to and then tap on the LCD. And you see it snaps in, auto focuses in. I'm in manual focus, but it just auto focused in. And now as I move this, I'm seeing the blue lines, the focus peaking lines, that are gonna help me to get that just right. So again, I can go back to the beginning and I can just really figure out where my shot is. Overshot at that time, let's get it. But overshot it again, too far. From here to there, perfect. From here, a little bit smoother, a little bit slower. Let's go really nice and slow back to the beginning. Where's the beginning? There's the beginning. And now real slow, real deliberate, focus rack through the elements to the back. Beautiful. I can, the fact that I can do this is just so crazy cool. So I've played with this a little bit before this started. I, you know, I, I took the time to make sure everything fit my camera and rigged it up, practiced it a little bit, but I didn't spend a whole lot of time with it. Um, I'm, I like it, I really do. And I know that the Kickstarter cost on this thing is really, really low. I'm not gonna quote what it is because I don't remember exactly what it is, but I know that it is very, very low. And so I am, I'm gonna say this is a win. For the cost, for what it costs, what it does, if you're doing video work at all, if you care about doing smooth focus pulls, smooth zoom pulls, I think this is definitely a product to look at. To look at. Let's, uh, let's here, let's go and spin this thing around, give you another close up look at this thing. And that is gonna be it for our moment here. Let's see, I'll go a little bit on the side here, grab this thing and zoom it in. And again, if you're watching live, if you've got any questions about it, please do throw them into the comments. If you don't have any questions, just say hi in the comments. It's always lovely to see who's watching. And uh, I do believe a representative from the company is watching. So if you've got any questions for them, they'll be able to address them for you. So there you go, nice close-up view. You can see exactly how that, how that works on there. And you can see how that counterbalance is really, is making sure that the zoom doesn't suddenly change on, or the focus doesn't suddenly change. This weight of this isn't gonna pull it down because this little ball on the back here, this guy right there, is acting as a counterbalance for zoom or focus. I dig it, I dig it. Now I imagine these a little bit too close to each other. They're bumping in, you can probably hear that. So I, would, I should move this orange one, which I've set as a zoom farther back. And the different colors are obviously just so that you can, you know, visually you know exactly which one you're grabbing quickly. You don't have to worry about, um, oh wait, which one is it? You know by looking at it. It's not like, Blue is for one and orange is for the other. That's just up to you, whichever one you want to assign. So I think that's it. So I'm gonna end this off with a question for you guys. What is your favorite low cost accessory for shooting video? Pretty detailed question, pretty specific, but let me know because I wanna see what else is out there. This is one of those really cool, really simple, uh, quite clever ideas that it's very low cost and allows you to do something that previously would be really, really hard, if not impossible to do. So I love that about it. So what are, what are the accessories that you're using? Tell me one of your favorite accessories for shooting video that cost next to nothing, um, or maybe not next to nothing, you know, but whatever, just something that you thought, this is a great bargain, this is a great deal, this is adding something to my shooting that I didn't have before. I wanna hear what it is so that we can uh, possibly talk about it on a future episode. So thank you guys for watching this one. Thanks for bearing through this whole weird setup. I know this is a weird one here, having to do the remote zoom remotely with the iPhone and switching the cameras, but it's kind of cool. I got a big TV over there to make sure that I know what's broadcasting live and that's all kind of crazy. It's a fun setup, but you know, it keeps on growing. That's it folks, thank you very much. It is Friday, so that means that we're heading into the weekend. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend for those of you who are watching it on Friday. And if you're not watching it on Friday, well, I hope you have a fantastic day. And we'll see you guys next time, bye-bye.